Hi, this is Miranda from My Scrappy Life and welcome back to my channel. This is a process video for Christmas in July where I'm going to use this cup file from the Confessions of the Paper Addict. Now I do have a tutorial here for Cricut and you can go about 2 minutes 21 seconds and then that's the process video. So on the, I've gotten questions regarding the PNG file that I particularly use for the design space for Confessions of the Paper Addict. Right here is where I am showing you that I pulled it up and I'm clicking on all the white space and turned it to like the gingham looking or checkerboard spot to be able to get a clear cut view. And when I do this, it makes my life a lot easier. I love using PNG files. Now I'm just, side note here, I'm showing you how to get to the spot of putting up that square that goes around. That shows the 12 by 12 layout. And it's just for reference. It does go away. It does not show up when you do your spot in cutting it. Now, everybody's like, well, why don't you use the SVG files? For me, the SVG files are a pain. I don't like them. These are easier because I don't mind backing my own cut files on my own time. Now, other people may like to use the SVG and the SVG files are a little bit easier to use and on the respect that you can be able to pull the SVG side of it a little easier to be able to do the backing of your cut files. Now the next time around I will take enough time to do the SVG side but I am telling you PNGs are the way to go. Just make your time, set some time aside to do the backing of the cut files. It makes it easier and it makes it easier for it to cut and be able to do what you need to do. That's just my take on it. Now what I am doing here is, is that I'm just trying to get the size. I have two photographs that I am using that are um, four by threes or three by four, four by threes. And I'm just looking at the size that I need. And now I'm just gonna send it to the cup file and you know to the Cricut and send it out and then on the way and then it'll be done. And I did do some of the backing of it off camera and now here I am I do it this way now when I've got a big old cut file like this that's easy peasy I mean look how easy this is I put it down I cut it out transition it call it a day now I do know that there has been a ton of talking about fussy cutting now my favorite fussy cutting scissors have always been the close to my heart or stampin up um small scissors like this I just it just flows with my hand it works well I you see that I am cutting with my right hand but I am very left-handed dominancy on the respect that I do a lot left-handed so I need a scissors that matches my right hand that I know for a fact that I'm going to be using my left hand a lot because I'm more dominant on that side it's a long story I can write and do everything left and right-handed and for me I do all of my cutting and stuff on my right hand, but I do so much with my left hand. And I'm pretty sure that if you guys actually watch a little bit of what I do for my layouts and such, you can tell that I am very left-handed um, for that respect. So for me, these are my scissors. These here are close to my heart scissors. They are in my shop. I'll link it down below for the direct link to these um, if you want to look at them they're reasonably cost they come out pretty quick and easy and I've got two of them only because I thought I lost one and I didn't I happened to forget to clean out my bag um, from one retreat so now I have two and I'm telling you I leave one in my trusty little bag and then I have one at home and they work wonderful so there's my bit about the scissors. The papers that I am using is the collection from the hip kit back in December. I got two of them. So I'm still using that same collection. I'm trying to use it all up for my December daily photos from 2018. And the wood pieces that you see on my wood for this um, bonfire or this campfire that's from Confessions of the Paper Addict. It is from Stampin' Up. It's a 6x6 six six paper pad that they sent out that's strictly wood pieces. It is no longer available. It came out during the winter time, I think last year or the year before. 
and I snagged two of them because I do use a lot of wood pieces and I absolutely loved how that turned out um, for that part. And I just used two different papers, backed it and called it a day. Now I am trying to use up all my little scraps on these two photos and they're like this piece right here is a backing of one of the packaging that they had that I absolutely love it. I love the colors of it. It works great. I'm just using up all of my scraps right now because I'm trying to get honed in on not having so many of them and that's what I'm doing here. Now while you see me finish this up, I am going to chat about this hop. Now down below it is a little bit different from any other hop. Whoever is next in line will be linked down below. If you're coming from the person in front of me, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. I hope that you stick around. If you like what you see, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. And then make sure that you look in the description down below to see who is next. Now, if you are starting with me to work your way around, make sure you start with me. Check down below in my description and then with everybody's description from there until you come back to me. And then that is who is part of this hop today. Um, Becky over at My Creative Life is the one that puts this on. I'm so grateful that she allowed me to come. I love this. Um, I've always loved December. December is a favorite time of my year, but I never thought to document it. And now I am documenting a little bit more than I ever thought. I have now two books going on my third book of Christmas stuff. Now granted, one of the Christmas books that I do have that are all 12 by 12, I do my... All of my December dailies are more December documented because I don't do something every day. But on the respect of that, one of my catalogs, books that I have for 12 by 12s is all of my Christmas markets that were over in Germany. And then I started documenting in 2016, 2017 time frame of my Christmas stuff. So I have 2016, 20. 17 in one book and now 2018 is starting my second book of 12 by 12s. I don't do the smaller ones because I don't really like them and sorry about my head right there. But yeah, so that's a little bit about how I do mine. So you will definitely see a ton of inspiration coming up in December as well. Um, all of that jazz is going to be coming up. But for right now, we're in July. I hope that you guys are loving this series of how Becky did this. This is a little bit different for me. I don't normally um do stuff in july but it is cool i'm glad glad for it because i can catch up so now that i have backed all of my photos and the photos of my daughter i will explain here in just a little bit i am putting down some thread on the fire just to add a little bit more like flame i guess out of it and whatnot make sure that you go and check out the confessions of the paper attic cut file shop this got released on this past Sunday and this will be in the shop for for you to purchase if you would like it is part of the great outdoors collection that she just released here in or just like literally this week I had to actually double check to make sure that this was released so that I could be able to put it on here and do these photos because I do try to um this is the only time that I do it day by day um where to make sure that it's done correctly in order of when things happened in my December documented book. This is the only time. Other than that, I do skip around, but I keep them in order once I get all of the layouts down and done and whatnot. Then I go back in, but this is the only time that I go strictly. I have them in order the minute that I get them, I keep them in order. Um, but uh, make sure you go check that out. That'll be linked down below. My scissors will be linked down below. The next person in line will be linked down below as well, along with all my social media information too. The photographs. Now, I scrapbooked before my photographs of my daughter being by the inflatables. And this is still part of the holiday um, the holiday show that Fort Gordon has where we do the lighting of the Christmas tree and having the bonfire and all of that. So my husband comes and does these for me. He does the bonfire pictures and just kind of gives me a little bit of photos while I work the booth for Close to My Heart since it's Christmas and I do all of my little crafty stuff then. 
I'm really getting into this distressing the edges, so I decided to get out the ruby from Close to My Heart and Sea Glass as well, and I just document it because they match pretty well for this. And I'm just placing little bits here and there of it. We do not get snow. It does get cold, but we don't get the snow or any of that sort with it, so I try to add as much Christmassy feel to it, Christmas gifts, um, snowflakes, all of that kind of stuff um, with this particular style of papers for me, the the spread, the 12 by 12 layout. Lost my words there. Sorry about that. Um, so now I'm just going through everything. I'm placing everything down and just getting it all organized. I just loved how this turned out. The pictures are massively huge. I love the way they look. They're, I know that they're just four by threes, but this campfire is just perfect. The two go together so well and it makes it pop so much off the thing that you could either state that the um, campfire is the focal point or the photographs can be the focal point. Either way, I just love how they turned out. I do place down my journaling lines, but I don't do them on camera because I'm not sure what I want to say yet. Sometimes I have to go back and look and see what I put on my Instagram for when I documented the, these photos. See if there was anything funny my daughter had said or whatever. I added the Santa Claus on the bottom and the two tags up on top. One of them states, I cover up one of them because I do have a duplicate of it. One of them says home sweet home. And then the other one that is showing right now is a cup of cheer. And I thought it would fit, fit well because of the color. I do take, by the way, those lights there, I take that word off because it blends in. And when I sent it over to the Confessions of the Paper Addict um, little message group that all of us for the design team is part of, they're like, what's that up on top? And I'm like, well, I'll take it off because I was thinking lights and I don't know why I use lights there. I was like, oh, well, the bonfire's lights, right? And I placed it there. I don't, I, I just was like, does this look good? Does this not look good? And I was like, I needed their honest opinion. And they were like, why do you have that on there? So I took it off and then it looks better. So in the still shots of that, you will see it as a close up and whatnot. You'll see what I'm talking about and it looks a lot better. So my title is going to be Jolly Good Times. I just love that saying. I thought it would worked out perfect for this and it fits perfectly right there where it's still keeps the campfire style going, the bonfire style going, and it makes it look good there. So make sure that if you are new to my sub, um, to my channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. If you like to see what you have, I do post about two to three times a week. So make sure you like and subscribe. If you are one of my subscribers, thank you for coming back. I'm glad that you are here. And now I'm just placing down my journaling. And then that is pretty much it. I do come out with, oh, I got new, um, there they are. I got the two new Nouveau Mists, the Micro Mist from Nouveau Drops. They are brand new, got them in, I'm so glad. So the green is um, Burly Swirl, I love the way it looks. And then the other one is Crimson Velvet and they have shimmer and I just love it. So the still shots are coming up and I will talk to you soon, bye.